method is uh, going to be, they call it uh, taking the square method or a square root method, okay? So the first one was uh, factoring, so solving uh, quadratic uh, quadratic equations, that was the one that we discussing. So we discussed the first method, which is uh, factoring method. Okay, factoring method. That's a very popular case. Now we're going to take the, the, the second method is, uh, we call it, you know, uh, taking the square method or the square, square root method. Okay, to get uh, these numbers. So what is going to be a square? Okay, that's going to be one a square root method or taking the square. Okay, method. So what we are going to do in this case is going to be, uh, you see, uh, note that, note that if uh, D is going to be a positive number, a positive number uh, and, uh, okay, a U square equal to the D is given. So it's going to be given. Then the, this is what we, it's going to be happen. So we have U square equal to the D. We can take the square root of both sides. So that give us radical U squared which is equal to the radical, radical D. You see the radical U squared is always absolute value of U. Not, it's not positive U, it's not negative U, it's not positive negative U, it's always absolute value of U. Okay, and this is going to be the square root of D. And in the case of the absolute value, if uh, this is going to be a positive number, then the solution is going to be U equal to positive, negative, radical, radical D. Okay, make sure you know the, you know the reason why you are going to do, do this one. Okay, so the reason that you get a positive negative is not like, uh, some people think that if it's a radical four, radical four would be positive negative two. No, the positive negative coming from the other side. The other side, which is absolute value of you radical u square is absolute value of u. If you want to drop the absolute value, you have to pay for it. So it's either a positive radical to d or a negative one. And we talk about that one later too. Okay, uh, so we need this one, we call it the square roots method or taking the square method, okay? Taking the square method, a square root method, and that give you two solution, positive negative radical, radical d. It's very popular because we are going to use it for the other purposes in future. So example, we want to, to solve each equation, solve each equation. You have other choices uh, to do these problems, but uh, this is the way we are going to do it. You see number, number one. Number one is suppose you want to solve this equation x plus one squared, okay, equal to the 16. You have two choices. You may uh, square x plus one squared, you know, move the 16, then try factoring method to be able to do it. But we are going to use the square root method. So this is going to be the solution. Okay, this is x plus one, all squared, equal to the 16. I take the square root. So that give you x plus one all squared. And this is going to be radical 16. And as we talk about it, you remove the absolute, uh, we remove the square, but we have to pay for it. It's the absolute value of x plus one, which is equal to the four. And the absolute value of x plus one equal to the four to give you, you drop the absolute value, but the result would be positive negative four. You have to solve for x, so you subtract one, x equal to negative one plus or minus four. Then you are going to break it in two parts to simplify it. So this is it. You have a negative four plus four, which is going to be three, or you may have 
negative 1 minus 4, which is going to be negative 5. So x equal to 3, one option. The other one is going to be x equal to negative 5, the second, second solution. Any question? So this is a quick way to take care of this type of problems. Okay, the other option, yes, you know, you can distribute it, simplify it, but as long as there is a perfect square to the left, we can use the square root method, we call it, okay? So we take the square roots of both sides and then you simplify it. Any question? So that is one version, nice version. The other one is, okay, this is going to be very useful for this type of problems. The second one, you see you have 3x plus 1, all squared equal to the 5. You see 5 is not a perfect square, we don't care. We need a perfect square to the left, okay? We need a perfect square to the, to the left to be able to, to take care of it. So I take the square root method, solution. So I rewrite it, is a 3x plus 1, all squared equal to the 5. Okay, equal to the 5. Now I take the, I take the square root of both sides. Okay, so this is it. This is going to be 3x plus 1, all squared. And this is going to be radical 5. So over here, you remove the square, but you have to pay for it. Absolute value of 3x plus 1. Okay, and this is going to be radical 5. Then uh, you want to drop the absolute value, drop the absolute value, 3x plus 1. But this is going to be equal to the positive negative radical 5. You have to solve for x, subtract 1. So 3x equal to negative 1 plus or minus radical 5. Since we cannot simplify negative 1 plus or minus radical 5, we stay as is. But you have to find the, to find the x, so to find the x, divide by 3. So x would be equal to negative 1 plus or minus radical 5 over 3 final answer. You don't need or you are not supposed to use your calculator to give us a decimal number, nothing. You just keep it as is. We like it in the radical, radical format. Any question? So this method would be useful, especially for this type of problems. Because if you square it and just move it to one side, then you cannot recover it as a factoring method. So just taking the square root and that gives us the final, the final answer. Okay, any question? Uh, there is going to be only one case that you got to be careful. Uh, you may be given something like uh, 4x plus 1, all squared. Okay, all squared equal to the, okay, equal to the negative 3. You see, this uh, equation won't have any so-called real solution. Because uh, if, you, if you take the square root, okay, if you take the square root, then the radical negative 3 doesn't, okay, doesn't make sense in this one, okay? Uh, so you've got to be careful related to, okay, to that case. So this is going to be the one. You can simply say there is no real solution, you see? Uh, this is going to be, this is a positive number and this is a negative number. So we cannot have a positive number to be equal to the negative number. So in this case, uh, there is no real solution, no real solution. You are going to have a solution with the complex numbers. But since we're dealing with the real solution, in that case, we don't have real solution and we are done. Any question? So that's the second method. You see, these methods are important because when you are in algebra only, you just knowing one method and you'll be able to take care of everything. Even on this part, we have a quadratic formula, but these techniques would have its own advantage. If you want to take pre-calculus, calculus, even calculus for business, we are going to use it. That's why we review it on our 
uh, more seriously than the one in algebra. Okay, so that's uh, taking the square, the square root method. Now uh, the third method. And this method is the one that we are interested in and in particular we want you to do this one for us on the on the test. Okay, what's the question? Uh, this is it. Yes, on the other side we get a negative sign. So in this case you have to say no real solution. There is a, something in the next section. Uh, they ask for the finding the real solution. Yes, uh, it's going to be no solution in this case. Yes. Okay, and your quiz is going to be next week. We talked about it before. It's going to be Wednesday. So uh, this is uh, going to be the, the case. Uh, what's the question is? Okay, so uh, we are going to, to continue. Okay. So uh, what is going to be this third method, which is very popular, the techniques we like it. You can do whatever you like on the quiz, but I give you one question solving this method, because this method is important for future. Okay, the second method. Second method, we call it the completing the square. So what's going to be completing the square method? Okay, this is it, completing. Uh, completing the, the square method, the squared method. You see, the technique of this problem is very important. Enable us to give us the quadratic formula and in future quite a lot. What's the idea of this method? Look at the one that we did before. You see, look at this one. And the reason that I was able to solve this problem was there was a perfect square here. You see a squared. And there was a perfect square. Or even in this formula. Look at the formula. There was a perfect square here, u squared. We don't care about the d, but this must be a perfect square. So what we are going to do, if a quadratic equation is given to you, we try to make that perfect square, okay? We try to change it to the u square equal to the d. Then we'll be able to use the, okay, that method. That's why they call it completing the square method. Okay, so what we're going to do in this case, uh, uh, in this case, uh, in this uh, case, one can, if you like, one can adjust, okay, the, the terms uh, of the equation, of the equation, this is your equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, and just the term of the equations uh, by using by using uh, the following identity, if you like, the following identity. What is this identity? I've already talked about it. Let me check the the circle. The following identity is if you have uh, uh, okay. I explained this one before. It's x squared plus uh, x squared plus mx, if you like. If you want to change it to the square, so what we do, we divide this coefficient by two. So it's going to be x plus m half, all squared, but minus the square of the m half. There are two methods. I explain both of them. Just use the one that you like. Okay, uh, there is going to be a missing, a missing square, if you like. So what we are going to do is, by using the, the following identity. So in this case, one can use, one can adjust the terms of the equation by using the following identity to convert it into the following form. Following form. So the form would be again u is square equal to the d. If this is going to be the case, uh, then we talk about it, u equal to the positive negative radical d is the solution, if you like. So this is the one that we call it completing the square method. Let me just explain it. 
uh, some people they don't like this formula because you already done something in algebra but this format is most popular you see this is the one we divide this one by two so that give m half so it would be x plus m half a squared always minus the square of the second one like the one we did for the for the circle I give you an example then identify the, the method that we are going to do okay so uh, I give you the instruction on the quiz and the test and you have to follow otherwise you are free you can use any method you like but we want this one so we wanted to solve the equation okay uh, using we give the instruction using compiling okay compiling the square method this is originally how they discovered the quadratic formula that we're going to give you in a minute okay solve the equation using completing the square the square method okay are you ready the first one x squared minus 4x plus 3 equal to the zero you see let's see how we're going to do it so i give it two methods you can use either one okay the one that we talk about is two steps only two steps remember what you want to do you want to change it to the u square equal to the t so what you do is a step one you move the constant to the other side move the constant to the other side solution because you need a perfect square here x squared minus 4x equal to the negative 3 that's a step one a step two you are here now you see this is x squared plus mx you want to change it into this format so what you do is step two divide this coefficient by two that give you negative two so you have x minus two all squared okay this is your perfect square but you have to pay for it you see minus m half a square whatever you got over here you have to subtract it why because when you square it we get x squared twice after four times second you multiply these three numbers together that give a negative four x but it's a plus four to a square you don't have a plus four so you have to subtract the four minus four okay so divide this coefficient by two that give you two x minus two squared but two squared will be four you don't have the four here so you subtract it whatever you got over here you square it and subtract it that's it you move the four to the other side you get the perfect square to the left x minus two all squared equal to the negative three plus four negative three plus four would be one so that give you x minus two squared equal to one you get a perfect square to the left any question so two easy steps you move the constant to the other side because you want to move make a room for your perfect squares so you divide this coefficient by two this is twice of what you are looking for okay so you divide it by two to get it so that give me negative two so you have x minus two squared but think about it when you distribute x minus two squared you get three terms you have only two so what you're going to do is it's going to be x minus two squared minus we call it b squared minus two squared which is four always minus so you move it to the other side now take the square root method and you're done so square root x minus two squared equal to one remember the absolute value of a negative two equal to one you drop the absolute value but you pay for it positive negative one you add the two positive negative one since you can simplify you continue case one two plus one which is three case two two minus one which is one so you have 
two solutions, x equal to three and x equal to one. Such an easy method, okay, for solving the uh, quadratic equation. And this method, if you want to take calculus in future, use this type of methods quite a lot when you get to that course. So it would be very useful really to, to get to know it. Okay, compilating the square, you need a perfect square to the left. How are you going to create it? You create it from these two terms here. You move the three to the other side. This is twice of the first time second. You need the second. So you divide negative four by two. Whatever you have, you put it here. X minus two squared, then always subtract minus two squared, because you don't have it, you see? You don't have that square part. Any question? So that was a very nice. Okay, let's have another one to see. You can have any equation, such a strong method, really. It doesn't matter. You give me any equation, I can do it for you. Okay, let's have another one. These are the type that you may not like it. Okay. Uh, so uh, what is going to be the other one? Uh, so we get something like, let's have x squared. Okay, this is going to be x squared plus 4x. Okay, x squared plus 4x. And uh, this is going to be, okay, how about, how about 1? Okay, one equal to, equal to the zero. You want to solve this one by completing the square method. Okay, step one, move the one to the other side. Solution, x squared plus four x equal to negative one. That's a step one. A step two, divide this coefficient by two. So that give you two. So you have x plus two, all squared. But remember, you have to pay for it. Minus, whatever it is, two squared, four. Okay, because when you go back, you see x plus two squared would be x squared. You multiply these three numbers together, that give you four x plus four. But you have to have a negative four to cancel it out. Okay, equal to a negative one. That's it. Move the four to the other side. X plus two, all squared, equal to the negative one plus four. So that gives you X plus two, all squared, equal to, equal to three. Any question? Now I take the square root of both sides. Okay, to see what is the question why it is a negative four. You see, when you square it, you see when you square this one, what's gonna be the result? Would be x squared plus four x plus four. You don't have a plus four here. So you put the negative four, so that plus four and negative four would cancel out each other. Because you should be able to get to the, to the original one. Okay, it's always minus whatever you have over here, a squared, you know, to, to cancel it out. If you don't put the negative four, you have an extra term here. Okay, take the square root of both sides. So that gives you x plus two all squared, radical three. So that gives you absolute value of x plus two equal to the radical three. You drop the absolute value, then you have to use a positive negative, positive negative radical three. You subtract the two, so X would be, okay, negative two plus or minus radical three. Since it's a radical three, you don't have to simplify it, and that gives you the final, the final answer. Any question? So it's a nice method, and it's a very easy method, really. You can use this one to solve all the equations and don't bother about any other other formulas. Okay, so I repeat it again. You are going to move the one to the other side. 
Okay, you always get x squared plus mx, like the formula that I gave you. You divide this one by two, so that gives you the one, x plus two squared. But always there are extra terms, two squared, which is a positive four. You put the negative four, positive four and negative four would cancel out. You get to the original one and then you're done. Okay, that's a type three, any question? Now, sometimes you may worry about uh, the decimals or just uh, fractions uh, to get uh, these numbers. What's the question over here? No. On the test, they ask, they, can you use any method you like? You can use any method you like, but I give you one example of this one. So when I t ask you to use completing the square, you have to do it. Okay, this method is important, so we're going to test it. If you don't say anything, yes, you can use any method you like. But we give you one question and we ask you use completing the square method to do it. And this is the easiest method. Okay, let's have the one that uh, you may feel a little bit uncomfortable uh, for this method, but it's not bad. Okay, how about if you have an odd number because you want to divide? Okay, uh, how about x squared plus 3x? Okay, x squared plus uh, 3x, uh, let's say plus 2, equal to the 0. You want to solve this one? Again, completing the square, otherwise we can do factoring into it right away. So, step one, move the numbers out. It's going to be x squared plus 3x equal to a negative 2. That's a step one. Make the squares. Divide this one by 2. It's not divisible. We write it down as a three halves. So what do you have? X plus three half, all a square. But remember, you have to pay for it minus a square of a three half. A square of a three would be nine. A square of a two would be four. That's it. Why? Because when you go back, we get X squared, X squared. 2 times 3, 6, 6 over 2, 3, 3x, plus 3 half a square, 9, 4. There is no 9 quarters here. So it's going to be positive 9 quarter and the negative 9 quarter, they cancel out each other. Okay, divide by 2, you get the 3 half, okay? x plus 3 half is squared. But uh, you need to subtract minus the square of the 3 half, which is 9 quarter, equal to the negative 2. Move the 9 quarter to the other side. It's going to be x plus 3 half all squared equal to negative 2 plus 9 quarters. You have to simplify this one. A little bit of a common denominator would do it. So the common denominator is 4. So I change this one into what? A negative 8, 4. And this is a nine quarter, so I can have one quarter. Okay, I just find the common denominator. So I have x plus three half squared. Okay, equal to equal to a quarter. Okay, so that was a little bit of fraction. To do it, any question? So take the square root on both sides to be able to continue. I put it on the top here so I can finish it here. Okay, so this is it. Take the square root. So we take the square root, that will give us a square root of x plus 3 half, all squared, and that's going to be the square root of a quarter. Okay, that's it. So over here is going to be the absolute value of x plus 3 half. Okay, and this is going to be just 1 half. You know, it's going to be radical 1, which is 1. Radical 4, which is 2. So you drop the absolute value, x plus 3 half equal to the positive negative 1 half. Okay, now you move the 3 half to the other side x equal to negative 3 halves plus or minus 1 half. 
you have to simplify it at two different cases with the positive and the negative so that give us a negative three half okay plus one half so that give a negative three plus two would be negative two over negative two uh, negative two over two which is equal to negative one one solution and if you go with the negative numbers, it's a negative three half minus one half. So that would give us a negative four half, which is a negative two. So you have two solutions, x equal to the negative one and x equal to the negative two, and then you're done. Okay, it can be done even if it's fractional one. Okay, historically, this is the way they solve a quadratic equation, you know, at the beginning. They just use the competing the square method. It was used by, okay, quite a lot. Okay, so this is uh, going to be uh, completing the square method. And there is only one more example. You see uh, the coefficient of x squared in these examples that I did, all of them, the coefficient is one. So what would happen if this coefficient is not going to be equal to one, okay? So this is going to be another uh, option that you are going to have. Okay, so I give you another one. When this uh, coefficient is not one and you have to so-called normalize it, okay? So that is going to be exceptional one, number, uh, number four. So that is going to be number, number four. And the equation is 2x squared, okay, minus 4x plus 1 equal to the 0. Okay, so this number is different. It's different from the other, and that's a type 2 that I talk about it. So, uh, this method, completing the square method, can be applied only if the coefficient of x squared is 1. Since the coefficient is two, you have to get rid of the two. How we're going to do it? You divide by two first, okay? So this is going to be your extra job to deal with this type of problems, okay? Solution, divide by two. Get rid of it, that's it. Then you'll be able to apply that method that I talk about, okay? Divide by two is like two x squared divided by two minus 4x divided by 2 and the 1 divided by 2. You see, this is it. You simplify it. So that gives you x squared. Okay, we simplify this one, that gives you negative 2x and you have the half equal to the 0. Okay, so we say we normalize, you know, the, the coefficient of x squared. So the coefficient of x squared was two, we divided by two. Now we are ready to apply the, okay, completely the square method. Any question? So this method uh, cannot be done if the coefficient of x squared is anything other than, than one. Now, uh, this is it, two steps, move, move the one half to the other side. So that's it, x squared minus two x, equal to the negative half, that's a step one. A step two, make the squares, divide this one by two. So that gives a negative one. So you have x minus one all squared minus negative one squared. One squared would be one, that's it. Always divide first. When you get these numbers, minus the square. This is m, m squared, equal to the negative one half. Move the negative to the other side. That give x minus one squared equal to the negative one half plus one. So that give you x minus one squared. That would be a positive half. Okay, take the square root of both sides. So that give you a square root of x minus one all squared. And this is going to be radical half. 
you know that you put the radical on the top and on the bottom on the top radical one would be one that's going to be one over radical radical two later we write it down as a radical two over two you know and that is going to be the case okay you normalize the denominator and you get your radical two over two you know that you multiply by the radical two the top and the bottom now uh, we remove the radical absolute value of x minus one equal to radical two over two you drop the absolute value then you have to pay for it positive negative radical two over two and you add the one x would be okay that's it x is equal to one plus or minus radical 2 over 2 the final the final answer okay when it's a radical you cannot simplify it you write it down as is no calculator nothing you know to, to use any question so that give you completing the square method but if you put all these methods together as we did it especially completing the square you are have the formula that formula is going to be your quadratic formula okay so we give you the quadratic formula and then you can use it it's very useful especially in calculus okay uh, so two methods that we are interested in either uh, quadratic uh, formula or completing the square method okay so I give you the completing the square otherwise you are free you can use any formula to use you know to get these uh, numbers in general if the equation is easy to factor, we factor it. If we think that we may be in trouble, we're just using quadratic formula. But you can use completing the square really to do all of them all the time. And this is the way they did it at the, at the beginning. Okay, so we put them together. Eventually, we are going to see the famous quadratic uh, formula. Okay, uh, some people expect to solve all the equation by factoring especially when they take calculus no it's not uh, you are not going to supposed to uh, uh, you know to just use factoring method all the time so uh, that's the uh, famous uh, solving the equation by quadratic formula this is it what is going to be quadratic okay formula that's it uh, we can apply the completing the square method, okay, and now I did almost everything you need really to prove it, but I'm going to write it down only. So uh, that's it, one can apply. That's the way they proved it. Uh, completing the square. Okay, completing the square method to show that the proof to show that the solutions the solutions of the equation of the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equal to the zero r this is it, x equal to, make sure you write this formula correct, is going to be negative b plus or minus the square root of, okay, square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Okay, it's a negative b plus or minus a square root of b square minus 4a times c divided by 2a this is the famous quadratic quadratic formula you can use it for all the equations in order to arrive at this formula you have to go through those three steps that I gave you you have to do the completing the square uh, taking the square root and eventually you will get this one you know nicely 
next it can be proved. Okay, let's see how we're going to use this formula. You see this quantity inside the radical? B square minus 4AC. You have to find this one first because you want to use the square root. Since the square root, if the inside is positive or the inside is zero, you can go ahead and find the solution. If the inside is negative, you know that the radical negative four, you know the square root of a negative number does not exist. In that case, you are not going to have any real solutions. So what we can do is we can test this one first to see if we have any solution, okay? So that's why this expression is important. So they give this expression a special name, okay? So the special name is going to be, they are going to give you a remark. It's up to you, you know, if you don't like this notation, just, you know, ignore it, but and that would be, that would be useful. So the quantity, okay, the quantity, B squared minus 4A times C is going to be called, okay, it's going to be called the, the discriminant. Okay, the discriminant, the discriminant of the, of the equation, of the equation. In some problem in your book, okay, they ask you this one by, by name, okay, these, uh, these expressions, so that's why you must know it when they ask you now to, uh, some problems, and in future, uh, you know, it would be would be useful. So the quantity B squared minus 4AC is called the discriminant of the equation, and I have a special notation for it. It's not in your book, but this is very popular. And is denoted by, we denote by delta. This is the way write it down, delta is equal to B squared minus 4AC. You see, that's a short and interesting, if you don't like this notation, just go ahead, use your own notation, we don't mind. Okay, so this quantity discriminant of the equation. So sometimes we can test the solution of the equation without solving it. So uh, there are uh, three possibilities. Okay, so uh, this is it. Uh, there are, okay. yes, question? Okay, so there are three possibilities, three cases. Okay, this is it. Uh, possibilities. Okay, what's going to be the first case? The first case, if this quantity is positive. So if delta is positive, we nicely find the solution, okay? We substitute here and we get the solutions, okay? If this is going to be positive, then the equation, okay, the equation has two real solutions, two real solutions. And your formula would be x equal to a negative b plus or minus a radical delta over 2a. You see that's uh, short and easy to remember. So we find the delta first, as I told you it's just a suggestion for these formulas. We find the delta first which is b squared minus 4ac, that's easier, better. It's going to be positive, you substitute here. If it's a nice number, you consider two cases and you give us the numbers. If it's not nice, radical two, radical three, just leave it as is. So that's a case one. Any question? Now what's going to be case two? Case two, if this is zero. If delta would be zero, see radical zero would be zero. And positive negative zero doesn't say, doesn't make sense. So we have only one solution. And the solution would be negative B over 2A, and then you're done. 
since you are looking for the solution, they say we have to repeat that solution. Okay, so it's going to be the case. Then the equation has one solution, has one real solution. Okay, if you like the formula, it's going to be x equal to negative p over 2a, because there is no delta part. That radical part will disappear. Okay, you get a positive negative zero. We call it repeated solution or just get it has only one solution. Okay, that's uh, case two. Case three, if delta is negative. If delta is negative, there is no real solution. Okay, in calculus and for the rest of this book, we don't usually use uh, complex numbers, but uh, we have one section, it's the next section. And then we talk about complex numbers, then you get the complex solutions. But on the test, we are going to identify it for you, whether we are interested in only the real solutions or the complex. But for the time being, nothing to worry about. Okay, so that's case two. So the case three, any question? So uh, case three, if delta is negative, you stop, there's no real solution. Okay, uh, case uh, three, this is it. Uh, case three, if uh, delta is negative. If delta is negative, uh, you know, you get the negative number under the square root, you cannot continue. So the equation, okay, the equation has no real solutions. Real solutions. The solutions are going to be complex numbers, okay? Then we talk about complex numbers later. So uh, this is uh, going to be, this is going to be the case. So we have three cases and nicely, then we can find the, the solution right away. Any question? And so we give you one question, a three parts, three equation to solve, and you can use quadratic formula to take care of those uh, numbers, okay? So this is the way we're going to question you. We give you the indication, example, we want to use, okay, use the quadratic formula. Use the quadratic, okay, use the quadratic formula to solve the equation. Formula to solve each equation. Okay, and it's going to be three parts. Are you ready? The first part. The first part. 5x squared plus 3x, okay. And this is it. And uh, this is going to be, okay, to get this uh, number. Okay, let's start with this one. Minus 8 equal to the 0. That's it, you want to solve this equation. You want to use quadratic formula, so you have to identify the A, B, C. Make sure everything is in one side of the equation. Uh, I go with the delta first, I test it. If there is any solution, then I'm going to find it. Okay, so this is my suggestion. Solution, find the A, B, C. A is equal to five. Okay, B is equal to three and the C is equal to the negative eight. Okay, we go for the delta first, so the delta is B squared minus four AC. It's easier to get this one first, really. If you don't like it, you can go with your formula, we don't mind. Okay, when you substitute, you must use parentheses. So B squared would be, you get a parentheses, a three squared. Okay, minus four AC, A is five. C is a negative eight. So that would be four AC. Okay, so we continue three squared would be nine. Three squared would be nine. And over here, we multiply the sign first. 
you have two negative, two negative make it into the positive. Okay, that's it, the numbers, four times five would be, uh, okay, that's it, 20, 160. Okay, it's gonna be 160, you put them together, that gave 169. So that gave you 169, which is nice, uh, delta is 169, it's positive, so you have two solutions. So we continue. If it's going to be negative, you stop. You don't have to continue, okay? So uh, we continue, we get the formula. The formula is x equal to, x equal to what? It's going to be negative b, remember? Plus or minus radical delta over 2a. That's your formula. So we're going to substitute, it's going to be equal to negative b would be negative 3 plus or minus radical delta, which is going to be 169, over 2a is going to be 2 times 2 times 5. Okay, radical 69 would be 13, so we continue, it's going to be negative 3 plus or minus uh, 13, okay, and this is going to be 10. Since uh, it can be simplified, so we continue. Two different cases. Okay, the, the case with the positive number that given negative three plus uh, thirteen divided by divided by ten. So negative three plus thirteen would be ten. Ten divided by ten would be one. So ten ten equal to one. That's going to be your first solution. Any question? So get the second one. The second one would be, it's a negative three minus 13 over 10. So that give me negative 16. So the top would be negative 16 over 10. We simplify by two. So that give us a negative eight fifth. So we have two solutions. X equal to the one is the first one and x equal to negative eight fifths is going to be the second solution and you're done. Any question? So it's a nice method, okay? And, and very useful, okay, that's going to be the one. Some uh, equation can be done by factoring, but when we say use quadratic formula, you have uh, no other option. So you have to follow the instruction to get the, that uh, number. Okay, any question? That's type one, nice, everything nice, radical nice. Okay, so we would like to get another one to see what's gonna be the different uh, possibilities. Okay, are you ready? That's a type one, nice. And the type one, uh, sometimes you have some, okay, a little bit of algebra involved. So what is gonna be this case? We have x squared. Okay, x squared minus, let's say, uh, 10x. Okay, uh, it's gonna be minus 10x, let's say minus uh, two. Okay, equal to the, equal to the zero. This is going to be the equation that we are going to be interested in, okay? Uh, so uh, this is it, maybe a positive two would be better. Let's see what is special about this one. Quadratic equation, okay. Want to use quadratic formula, check the delta first. We go for the A, B, C first, okay, solution. That's gonna be the solution. And you pick your A, your A is one. Okay, your B is a negative 10. And your C is a positive two. Okay, check delta. So we check delta to see what's going on. So our delta is equal to b squared minus four a times c. Okay, that's it. You substitute, make sure you use parentheses. So it's gonna be b squared, which is gonna be a negative 10 squared. Okay, minus four ac, minus four times a, 
A is 1, C is 2. Okay, so uh, that gives you the, the case. So uh, 10 squared, 10 squared would be 100, a positive 100, and 4 times 2 would be, uh, would be 8. Okay, that gives you a negative 8. Okay, it's going to be a negative 8, and then you subtract it, that gives you 90, 92. Okay, that will be 92. Mm, okay, so that's going to be the one. So it's not a nice number, it doesn't matter. It's positive. Okay, it's positive. So you continue, although it's not a perfect square. So you continue, so your x simply is going to be negative b plus or minus radical delta over 2a. Okay, so uh, this is uh, going to be, this is going to be the, the, the case. Okay, so uh, we just substitute. So the negative b would be negative, negative 10 plus or minus delta is 92 divided by 2. You cannot simplify it. So simply that give you 10 plus or minus radical 92 over 2, and then you're done. Okay, I just wanted to see that, you know, you, you may not get a nice, a nice result, but you are going to use your quadratic formula to see what's going on for the, for that, that problem. Okay, so that's a type two. So to type one, nicely done. The type two, you may get some radical. It cannot be simplified. Uh, we are not going to use calculator. If it's going to be money problems, you know, something that you have to find the exact value, then you go for it. But otherwise, we leave it as is. Okay, that's the case two. Any question? So what's going to be case three? Uh, case uh, uh, three is going to be, so that is uh, number three. This case is very clear. Okay, this is it. You may be given 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 equal to the 0. And you've been asked to use quadratic formula. Again, you identify the a, b, c. So the solution is going to be your a is equal to 4, your b is equal to 4, and your c is equal to 1. Okay, check delta, see what's going on. So we check delta, which is b squared minus 4ac. Okay, the b squared, b is equal to 4. So that gives you 4 squared minus 4ac. 4 times a is 4, c is 1. So 4 squared would be 16. So it's going to be 16 minus 16, which is equal to the 0. So delta is equal to the zero, you know that. You are going to have one solution only. Okay, so the equation, just for your information, the equation has one solution. One solution. Remind yourself that you get one solution only. Uh, so the formula is going to be x equal to, which is a negative b. You don't have the delta anymore. Okay, so the delta is zero, if you like, positive negative zero over the 2a. So it's going to be just negative b, b is four, so negative four over 2a, two times four. So that gives you a negative four and over eight, which is a negative half. So x is equal to the negative half, the final, the final answer. Okay, so the equation is given to us, uh, okay. We, we check the delta to see if we have any solutions. Delta happened to be zero, so this is it. Delta is zero, so we are going to have only one solution. And that is the case two. Any question? The, the last case is 
when the delta is negative. Okay, this is going to be the, the last case. So it is uh, going to be, okay, let's have something like uh, 3x squared. Okay, it's going to be 3x squared and this is going to be plus x plus 1 equal to the 0. Want to solve this equation? You check what's going on with the delta. So that's it, solution. So your A is equal to 3, your B is equal to 1, and your C is equal to 1. Check delta. So delta is equal to the B squared minus 4AC. B is 1, use parentheses, it's going to be 1 squared minus 4AC, 4 times A, 3 times C, 1. So 1 squared is 1, so that gives you 1. Sign first, minus, minus 12, which is equal to the negative 11. So delta is negative, so you stop, there is no real solution. Okay, there is no real solution. If they ask for the complex solution in the next section, we continue, but otherwise, in calculus, we don't use complex numbers. In this case, we just use it in the next, uh, next section, but otherwise, always, we work with the, with the real numbers. Okay, so three cases, and we have no solutions, and uh, we are done. Okay, any question? So uh, this is uh, section 1.4. So I give you a break. If we come back, we check to see what would happen if you would like to get a solution when delta is negative, and this is where you have to use the complex numbers, okay? Section 1.5, we introduce uh, the, okay, complex numbers for you, and then we get the solution of the equation, even when the delta is negative. Any question? So you get 10 minutes, it's 8.21. 8.31 we come back and we cover that section 1.5. Try to finish the equation all together. Okay, see you in 10 minutes. Hello?
<sighs> okay, any question? So uh, we did the quadratic uh, formula to, okay, to solve the quadratic equation. Now you have to decide what you want to do about this last part. Okay, there is uh, no real solution. There's no real solution because the radical, uh, okay, square root of negative 11 is not a real number. So what you are going to do as usual in mathematics, uh, the domain of the definition is a real number so far. So all the variables are real variables. So what we can do is we can extend the domain of the definition. So we're going to bring more numbers, more numbers in to be able to take care of this radical negative 11, okay? Uh, so we extend the domain into the domain of the complex numbers. You may have seen the complex numbers before, but uh, this is it, officially we're going to sit in this course. So we give a description of those numbers and then we come back and we solve the equation. But if the, you want to solve the equation and they ask you to find a real solutions, you're done. But if they ask you to find a real and complex solutions, so this means you are not done. Okay, but as I told you, in, com in calculus, we don't use the complex numbers. So the, you have to take calculus one, two, three first and come back and work with the, with the complex numbers, okay? so we need it for future, so we check it in this section, then uh, it's going to be useful. So we give you one question on the complex number. So introduction of the complex numbers. So this is uh, section 1.5. So there is a reason for creating anything in mathematics. Over here, the reason is, would like to be able to solve all the equations. So that was the idea at the beginning. So what is going to be a complex number? I'm going to talk about it briefly, really. It's quite interesting subjects and it's very dense, but we just give you as much as you know, you, you need to be able to take through, to go through this, this part. 
Okay, so what is going to be, that's a section 1.5, yes, it's a complex, uh, complex numbers. Okay, uh, so we give a motivation, the motivation is, so we start with this uh, question. So the question is going to be, solve each equation. Solve each equation. See the, the first one, you have x squared minus four equal to the zero. We already talked about how we're going to solve this type of the equation, remember? So the solution is we move the four to the other side and then we take the square root. So we take the square root, it's going to be x squared is equal to the four and eventually x would be a positive negative four because of the uh, square root of four. Okay, uh, remember that would be positive negative, positive negative two. But uh, if you want to use uh, solve uh, similar, use similar method for this one, okay, x squared plus one. So the solution for this one is going to be x squared equal to the negative one. Okay, if you take the square root of both sides, so you seems to have positive negative radical negative one. Okay, so but the difficulty is that radical negative one is not a real number. It's not a real, real number. Okay, uh, so what are we going to do? So we can say that, uh, so the equation has no, so the equation, equation, okay, has no real solution, real solution. So in order to take care of uh, that, uh, that condition, if you would like to have a solution, so uh, what, what they did or what we are going to do is, we're going to expand the, the, the complex numbers. So the expansion is going to be, we are going to create something, okay? We call it the definition. So what are we going to create? We are going to add this radical negative one to the set of the set of the real numbers. Okay, so what we are going to do is this radical negative one. We are going to call it. Okay, this is going to be called the imaginary unit. Okay, imaginary. We are going to call it the imaginary. Okay, this is it. We call it the imaginary unit and is denoted by, okay, we denoted by i. i equal to the radical negative one. Okay, so that gives you i equal to the radical negative one. So as soon as you get this one, we say, oh, note that now the condition is going to be that i squared is equal to the negative one. So we create a new number, new quantity. Okay, this quantity would satisfy the condition that we are interested in, i squared equal to the negative and negative one. Okay, so in this case, okay, this is it, in this case, if you have a x squared plus one equal to zero, so the x squared would be equal to the negative one. So we replace the negative one by i squared. So the solution would be x equal to the positive negative i are going to be our solutions, okay, of the, of the equation. You see, we did solve it. We find the solutions, but the solutions are different. But this is algebra. The idea was solving the equation at any price, if you like. At any price means you need this type of a type of numbers. So that's a the motivation. There are different ways to introduce complex numbers. The main reason really is coming from physics. There are some phenomena that if you want to justify it, getting mathematical modeling, you have to go through the complex numbers. But uh, your 
with compared with your level of knowledge. So that's why we are going to justify it in this format for you. Okay. Uh, so uh, that that would be enough to solve the quadratic uh, equations. But we want to give you general, okay, general idea. So we are going to introduce the full complex numbers. With this part, we'll be able to give you a solution of any equation. But we give you a brief description of these numbers, then we come back and we do the equation. Okay, any question? Uh, in physics, uh, they have I, you know that in physics, I stand for the ampere. So that's why if you are measuring physics, they don't use the I, they use J for the complex uh, imaginary unit. Any other discipline, it's I, but you are not measuring physics. So that's why we are going to use I, okay? So that was a motivation. Now we give you the full definition of a complex, uh, complex numbers. Okay, we work with it because any, when you talk about the numbers, you are interested in adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. So we do this type of things and then we come back and we solve the quadratic equation using the complex numbers, okay? So this is a definition of a complex number. And that's it. So to get the complex numbers, this is the full definition. If A and B are real numbers, real numbers, then A plus B I, we know the I. Okay, then A plus B I is called is called a, a complex, okay, a complex number. It's going to be called a complex, a complex number. Okay, so this is it, A plus BI. You know that where that I is going to be imaginary unit that uh, we, we talk about it. It's going to be a, a complex numbers. The, the collection, the set, the set of all complex numbers, of all complex numbers, okay, is denoted by, is going to be denoted by, denoted by C for complex. Or if you are going to be a math major, this is going to be the special C that we use. So this C, if you see it in mathematics, this means complex, uh, complex numbers. Okay, so this annotation, there are quite a lot, but we make it uh, uh, brief. Uh, okay, so if uh, Z, they usually use Z for the complex numbers. If Z is equal to the A plus BI, okay, then A is going to be called, A is the real part the real part and B, they call it the imaginary part, is the imaginary part. Imaginary part of, of Z. Okay, not in this course, but in future we write See, they say real part of Z is A. That's a notation. And imaginary part of Z is B. If you want to do anything with the complex numbers, you have to identify this imaginary real and the, okay, imaginary part of the complex, uh, complex numbers. Okay, so for example, For example, if uh, z is equal to the 2 minus 5i, okay, and then a is 2 and uh, b is negative 5. So that would be, you know, the real part 
So if you like, the real part of Z is equal to two, and imaginary part of Z is equal to the negative five. So these are going to be in the notation that if you want to get more serious with the complex numbers, you are going to use it in future. Okay, it's a kind of an order pair. We get A and the B. And these two points can be identified into the rectangular coordinate, if you like. And then you get a point. So it's going to be like, you know, every complex number is going to be a point into the plane. It depends how we're going to, to justify it. Uh, so your job, uh, operation with the complex numbers. So we give you complex numbers. We would like you to add subtract, multiply, divide. How are we going to do it? There is a formula we can talk about, but it's algebra. You remove the parentheses, combine the like terms. Okay, if we get to the is square, replace it by negative one. So we don't have to give you the instruction, you know, step by step as it is in your book. So we usually give you one problem, uh, checking all these operations for us. Okay. So this is your job. Operation, let's say operations means adding, subtraction, okay? Adding, subtraction, uh, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. Okay, with complex numbers. With complex numbers. That's your job. So we give you an example and we check it. Okay, example. They usually ask you simplify. Simplify each expression. Okay, each expression and write, write it, or write your result, write the result. Okay, they usually ask you to the right result. Uh, automatically you have to do it, but we you know we just uh, give you the indication in the form of A plus BI. Automatically you have to simplify it yourself because we need a complex numbers. And a complex number is going to be form of the A plus BI. Okay, are you ready? Addition and subtraction, very easy. We remove the parentheses, we combine the like terms. So this is going to be the first one. Okay, suppose you want to add five minus three I plus 7 plus 2i. That's it. It's algebra. Remove the parentheses, combine the like terms. That's it. Okay, so the solution is going to be, this is it. Solution. Rewrite it. Remove the first parentheses, 5 minus 3i. It's a plus. So we remove the second one without changing anything. So it's going to be plus seven plus two i. That's it. Combine the like terms. Put the numbers first. Remember, you want to write them in the form of a plus b i. So five plus seven would be 12. 12. Okay, the i part is a negative three i and the two i. Okay, like a we combine the, the like terms, <clears throat> is a negative three plus two would be negative one. So it's going to be negative one i minus i, and you're done. <clears throat> Any question? So we're just uh, combining the like terms. As you can see, we go with the numbers first, five and seven. Five and seven would be 12. And then negative three i and the two i. Negative three plus two would be negative one. So negative one i, the final answer. That's the case one. Any question? That's addition. Subtraction. 
Okay, uh, subtraction. This is it, number two. Number two, you want to subtract. Subtract, uh, this is it, four minus seven i. Okay, minus two plus 10 i. You see, it's a subtraction. So you remove the prayer parentheses. You know that the second one, you have to apply the negative sign inside to combine the like terms, okay? So the solution is equal to, remove the first parentheses, going to be four minus seven i. To get the second one, apply the negative sign. So it's going to be minus two, negative positive would be negative, minus 10 i. Any question? Don't miss this negative sign. Negative, positive, negative, and the positive, again, negative. Combine the like terms. The like terms, we go with the numbers first. It's a four minus two, which is equal to two. Okay, it's a negative seven i minus 10. Negative seven minus 10 would be negative 17. So we get negative 17 i. Remember, you must write it down in the form of A plus B i. So be able to identify the real part, which is two, and the complex part, which is negative, negative 70. Okay, any question? So that was adding and subtracting. But when you do this type of operation in your book, they have another version. What is this version? Look at this one, number three. Number three, you want to do this. Five plus, okay, it's going to be five plus a radical negative 25. Okay, negative 25. Then they ask you minus, this is it, minus three plus two radical negative four. You see this one? You know that. With the real numbers, you can't do this type of operation because radical negative 25 doesn't make sense, does not exist. And this does not exist. So what you are going to do is, you are going to change these into the i form, if you like, using the fact that the radical negative one is i, and then come back and do the job. Okay, so we can't do it. In the, there, was a, there was a period in mathematics that Euler was the one who created two notation for the radicals. One of them is when it's a radical positive 25, and one of them when it's a negative 25. You know, just this top one was shorter in the case of the negative. And he just stayed with this method. But later on, you know, the creation of a complex numbers, they change it. So what is your job? Change it first. How are going to change it? You see, this is a radical negative 25. Remember, i square is a negative one. So what you can do is, you can rewrite this one as radical. I'll just show you this first one. It's a 25 times a negative one. So you are going to remove the negative one, replace it by i squared. Because the i squared is a negative one. So quickly, radical negative 25 would be changed to the radical 25i squared, which is 5i. Any question? I mean, automatically you can do it right away. I just explained the first one. For the other one, we do it briefly. So the radical negative 25, okay. So we remove this negative. We replace it by i squared, which cause i squared is a negative one. Then you have radical 25i squared, which is going to be 5i. It's the uh, same thing for the negative 4. So we change it to the 4 times i squared. Okay, radical 4i squared would be 2i. 2i. And again, you can do it automatically. You don't have to go through these uh, expressions. So we go back, we substitute. So what we have is, uh, this is a uh, so now you have a five plus, plus what? 
plus 5i, 5i, minus 3 plus 2 times, 2 times what? 2 times 2i. Okay, so now this is going to be 5 plus 5i, remove the parentheses, minus 3, and this is going to be 2 times 2, 4i, minus 4i. Any question? Now combine the like terms. Combine the like terms, 5 and minus 3 would be 2. Okay, 5i minus 4i, 5i minus 4i, that gives you just 1i. It's going to be plus i, and then you die. Okay, so be prepared. In your book, they get quite a lot of this type of uh, radical negative 4, negative 25, negative 9, but it's okay. So we replace the i by i squared. You have to change it to the, uh, to the complex format. Then you'll be able to do it. Okay, any question? So that was adding and subtracting with all these possibilities. And the next one is multiplication, which is easy, which is multiply as in algebra. So you want to multiply, let's say 3i times 5 minus 2i. It's multiplication, you distribute it. Okay, you multiply, you go forward, and then you simplify. So that's it, it's going to be 3i times, uh, times uh, 5 minus 2i. You multiply, you go forward, the numbers, 3 times 5, 15. It's going to be 15i minus 3 times 2, 6. That's 6i squared. But you have to simplify it. You know that i squared is equal to the, uh, is equal to the 1. So i squared is equal to the negative 1. So this would be equal to the 15i minus 6i squared. 6 times a negative 1. So negative 6 times negative 1. So that gives you 15i. And this is going to be a positive 6. To write it down in the complex numbers form, it's going to be 6 plus 15i. You have to switch it, remember. So that gives you the final, the final answer. Any question? So it's algebra. We just uh, distribute it. And at the end, when we get to the i squared, we replace it by, by a negative 1 for the i squared, OK? So this is it, 3 times 5, 15, 15i, positive, negative, negative, 6i squared. i squared is a negative 1. Automatically, we change it to the positive quickly. OK, it's a positive 6. But you must have the number first, 6 plus 15i. The final, the final answer. That's a type one for the multiplication. Any question? The type two is the kind of the FOIL method. Okay, number five. Number five, you want to FOIL it? It's a two plus three i times a five minus four i. You see FOIL it. Apply the FOIL method to get this number. Okay, so solution is going to be equal to, you multiply, you go forward, you see? This is it. 2 times 5, 10. So we continue, positive negative would be negative. 2 times 4, 8, 8i. Eight Come back and repeat the procedure. Okay, this is it. So multiply, it's going to be a plus, 3 times 5 would be 15, that's a 15i. And then we continue, positive negative would be negative, 3 times 4 would be 12, but 12i squared. Simplify. So I'm going to simplify it. Uh, this is 10. We have a negative 8i and the 15. Combine the like terms, that give us a 7i, 7i. And this is i squared. Remember, i squared is a negative 1. So negative, negative would be positive. So that give it 12. 
okay? So we're using the fact that I square is equal to the negative one. Any question? So the I part, we simplified negative eight plus 15, okay, which is gonna be a positive seven, seven I. Okay, and the I squared, uh, squared is negative one, that give you positive 12. Now we have to combine the like terms again, go with the numbers first, 10 and 12 would be 22. So that's gonna be a 22 plus seven I, the final answer. Okay, so it's a multiplication. You may have to use the FOIL method, so we can do it. Any question? Now, there is a, a special product that we are going to use it, okay? Like the special product that you have in algebra. So what's going to be that special product? Number six. You can use the foil or you can use the special product. Suppose you have a seven plus two i times seven minus two i. Remember it's like a minus b or a plus b times a minus b. So that gives a square minus b square. So it's the same thing over here, okay? You can go with the foil all together or just a, a special case, this is it. Seven times seven, 49 minus two i times two i. Okay, so this is it, it is going to be solution is equal to seven times seven would be 49 minus a two i times two i. Two times two would be four, so that give you four i squared. Okay, seven times seven, 49 minus two i times two i, four i squared, but i squared is a negative one. So this is going to be 49 plus four. Again, we remind you that the i squared is a negative one. So that gives you 53, which is quite interesting because you multiply two complex numbers, but you get the real one. It's the one that we're going to use for the, when you want to, to divide. Okay? So you know that the second one is the conjugate of the first one, as in algebra. The seven minus two i, and the seven minus, seven plus two i, and the seven minus two i. One of them is the conjugate of the, of the other one. Any question? So in the case of the multiplication, you may have, you know, these uh, type of problems. Again, in your book, they give you uh, this format. Number seven. Okay, you have something like, uh, let's say something like three minus radical negative nine times five plus, okay, five plus radical and negative uh, 16. That's the one. I want to make it more interesting. You can add the numbers here like uh, a three. So as we talk about it, you cannot do anything about it as is. You have to change these radicals into the I form, then come back and do it. So solution, remind ourselves that the square root of negative nine, remember it's like a nine I squared, because we replace that a negative one by I squared. So that give us a three I, three I. Okay, we do the same thing to the radical negative 16. So we have a radical negative 16. So we change it to the 16 I squared. So that give us a four I. Okay, this is how quickly we can remove those, those radicals. So go back, substitute and then do the job. Okay, this is it. So the expression that we did have, now it's gonna be this change into this format. It's gonna be three minus radical negative nine, which is a three i. Okay, times 
it's a 5 plus, 5 plus, 3 radical negative 16 is going to be 3 times 4i. Okay, so we have 3 minus 3i times 5 plus 12i. So we change it to the format that we can be handled, okay, by the, by the FOIL method. Any questions? So these are old-fashioned, you know, mathematics, if you like, that we quickly change those, uh, okay, those uh, radicals into the complex numbers that enable us to continue the algebra. So you have to file it. So this is going to be the case. Uh, you multiply, you go forward to get the FOIL method. 3 times 5 would be 15. So you go on, this is going to be plus 3 times 12, 36, 36 i. You go inside, minus 3 times 5 would be 15, minus 15 i. And then you continue, negative positive would be negative, 3 times 12 would be 36, but this is going to be 36 i squared. Okay, any question? Uh, combine the like terms. So this is already 15, you can't do anything about it. This is the 36i minus 15i, you subtract. Okay, if you subtract and that give you what, it's going to be plus. Okay, and this is going to be a 21, but 21i. Okay, 36 minus 15. And this is a negative 3, 36i squared. Replace i squared by negative 1, so negative, negative, positive, make it into plus 36. Okay, just remind you that i squared is equal to the a negative 1. Any question? So we do the FOIL method and multiply them together, and uh, finally, it's equal to combine the like terms 15 and 36. Okay, so that gives you 51. So it's going to be 51 plus 21i. The final, the final answer. Okay, so it was something impossible in the past. Doesn't make sense any, any, uh, anything, if you like. Doesn't mean anything. But with the change to the complex numbers, we were able to take uh, care of it, to get the, to get the number for it. Okay, any question? So we have one more case to go, and this is uh, the division, okay? So that is number seven, number eight. Number eight, you want to divide, you see? Look at this one, two divided by one minus i. You know that, if you want to divide, you can only divide by Okay, by whole number, if you like, by real numbers. Okay, if you give you a pizza, you cannot divide the pizza into the one minus i. But you can divide the pizza into what? It's into two, divided by three, divided by six. So, we can do this division, but if this number is not going to be a complex number. So, what we're going to do is, we are going to change it. It's like the radical expression in algebra. So in order to change it into the real number, we are going to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of one minus i. Conjugate of one minus i would be one plus i. And we already talked about it that, look at this one. If you multiply a complex numbers by its conjugate, the result is a number. So that would enable you to, you know, to divide the pizza if you like. Okay, you know, it, it's not a, a big deal, so that's why we just take care of it by, by one, uh, one problem. So, uh, you, you can divide only by the whole number, if you like. So, uh, what we are going to do is, we are going to divide solution. This is the given one. You multiply it. The top and the bottom by the conjugate. The conjugate would be two times one plus i. 1 minus i times 1 plus i. 
okay? Since to do it to the top and the bottom, so you are not going to do anything, anything wrong. Now we continue. We multiply the top, you multiply the two inside, so that gives you two plus two i. That's the top. The bottom one is just a special product. It's going to be one times one. You see, this is it. One times one, and the i times i. So one times one would be one, minus i times i would be i squared. That's it, i squared is negative one. So it's going to be equal to the two plus two i, and this is going to be one, okay, minus negative one, the i squared. And so that gives you a plus one, so that gives you two plus two i divided by two. You see? Now we get the two, we can divide. Okay, we can divide it. So what's going to be the result? Two divided by two plus two i divided by two. Two divided by two would be one plus two divided by two would be one. So the result would be one plus i. Okay, you see, nicely can be done because we change the denominator from a complex numbers into a real number. And then when it's a real number, you can divide it, nice to you divide. Okay, so this is a division of a, of a complex numbers. I'm going to give you another one. This is the operation. You're just using the, you know, this, the, the radical negative one equal to the i really in this course. But in case in future, uh, there are some cases, some situation that you have to go through the complex numbers. That's why you wanted to know it. Okay, that's number uh, part eight, if you like. And uh, instead of give you one more example, I just give you the application for that. Uh, okay, solving the, the equations so that you can have everything on this one. Okay, so the actual application is uh, this one. Okay, so example, and this is the way we are going to tell you use the complex numbers. Example, find all real and complex. When you see this one on the test, this means if delta happen to be negative, you have to continue. Okay, real and complex solutions. Solutions of the equation. Okay, real and complex solution. And this is it, x squared plus uh, 6x plus 10 equal to 0. Of course, in this case, you just go with the quadratic formula. You can do it otherwise. Okay, form uh, delta to see what type of solution do you have. So the solution would be A is 1, B is 6, C is 10. Okay, form delta to see what type of solutions do you have. Delta equal to b squared minus 4ac. b is 6, so b squared would be 6 squared minus 4ac, 4 times 1 times 10. Okay, so that gives you 36 minus 40 which is a negative four. So delta is negative four, it's negative. So the solutions are going to be, there's no real solution. So the solutions are complex numbers. Okay, so there is no real solution for solutions. Okay, that's the one. But you see, they ask, a real and complex. If they just ask, find the solution of the equation, you're done. 
but they emphasize that they are interested in either real or complex solutions. So you have to continue. Give us the complex solutions. So get the formula, x equal to negative b plus or minus radical delta, okay, over to a. Substitute x equal to negative b. b is 6, negative 6 plus or minus radical delta. Delta is negative 4. Over 2a, 2 times 1. Okay, remember negative 4, we change it to the 4i square to continue. So it's going to be x is equal to the negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 4i squared divided by 2. 4i squared would be 2. So x would be negative 6 plus or minus 2i divided by 2. So divide by 2 to simplify it. So it's going to be x equal to negative 6 divided by 2 plus or minus 2i divided by 2. So we simplify it. x would be negative 3 plus or minus i. So your equation got two solutions, negative 3 plus or minus i. You see, that's why these complex numbers are such an important quantity. Your equation, the degree was 2, x squared. So this means if you have the degree of the equation is 2, you always will have two solutions. But uh, sometimes the solutions are going to be complex numbers. It was Gauss for the first time, he just used, uh, he introduced also complex numbers. He used it to prove that if the degree of the equation is n, you are going to have n solutions. But some of the solution can be complex numbers. So this means if the degree of the x is five, you must get five solutions. And it's possible to find all of them, but you can't do it later on, you know. It's not part of the deal for you to check all the solution of the complex numbers, but you should be able to find it when it's a quadratic, okay, equation. Uh, that's it for tonight. I'll give you more example on this complex part uh, next time. So it's a very dense section. We try to, to, to finish it, okay? And we give you uh, one question regarding this uh, complex numbers property and the, and the equation. Okay, so I will check because uh, we have uh, no quest, no uh, class on Monday because of the Labor Day. Okay, so we have the quiz on Wednesday. So I double check uh, the section that we can cover by uh, uh, Wednesday. So I give you a notice for the assignments that can be due next week, your first quiz and the practice quiz and the take on one or whatever we need. So check the assignments for more information regarding the quiz number one. But basically, you know that I need five problems from each sections. Okay, so for example, I checked section 1.5 tonight and the 1.6. So you should pick five problems from those tentative one that we posted. Five problems from section, for example, 1.5 and five from 1.6. You put all these problems together, you take a picture, you know, PDF file, whatever you like, and on the day of the quiz, you email it to me to get your 10 points. This is the way we are going to collect the, the assignments, okay? So I send you an email, an announcement on the canvas, identify the sections that's going to be due and what you are going to do next week. And that's it. Any question? Okay, so we are done with this section. We try to cover one more section for the for the quiz. And uh, this uh, next mm -hmm. section is gonna be easy. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a couple of 